Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're getting ready to um, create the video for this week so we can worship together. You know, when we gather together around these videos, this is a sacred time. This is our way of worshiping um, at home, and it is gathering around the Word of God to grow in our faith and our knowledge. Today, we're going to continue our series on Reformation faith and take a look at really what is it that that motivates and compels us and drives us to live out the faith, to live a holy and godly life. Um, it really comes down to one way to think about it is that the Christian faith drives and motivates our personal faith in Christ as we live each day as his people. We're going to kind of work through those themes today under the theme of gospel motivation, that the gospel motivates us to holy living, living out the Christian faith. We're glad you're with us. We'll see you here in worship in just a minute. my life this walk of faith express it in one story and proclaim it to the world my intent would be that everyone could see on my own I was lost but with you my hope is found came from you every dream I've realized inspired by you any wisdom gained each triumph claimed every rescue every miracle explained by you from the depths of my soul this is my life's goal To live each day as someone who has faith in you To trust My darkest hour I know you'll never leave me that's my greatest source of power and should my days run short and death be close at hand let these words testify to the truth on which I stand came from you every dream I've realized inspired by you any wisdom gained each triumph claimed every rescue every miracle explained by you from the depths of my soul this is my life's goal To live each day as someone Who has faith in you All I've held in my possession Came from you Every dream I've realized Inspired by you This is my life's goal To live each 
there's someone who has faith. Let me live each day as someone who has faith. I've got to live each day as someone who has faith in you. Welcome to worship, everybody. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray Martin Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, thy dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please thee. For into thy hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let thy holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, the very first Psalm. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like shaft that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Our second scripture reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, the first 21 verses. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to your faith. If service, in serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints 
and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. Jesus said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, Though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his imprudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead give of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of our Lord. We join together now as we confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or so your power make known for you are Lord of Lords alone defend your Christendom that we may sing your praise eternally oh comforter of Christless 
A term that's helpful to know and learn when it comes to theology, Christian doctrine, and the study of Holy Scripture is gospel motivation. Gospel motivation is a way to describe our Christian faith and life and that our Christian faith and life is motivated by the good news of eternal salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel motivation keeps the proper order to things so that you do not fall into the false teaching of works righteousness. Gospel motivation means that Christ and his work on the cross for you comes first. And then afterwards, you begin to live a holy and a godly life. Christ first, then our holy life. Here's a passage from the Gospel of, or actually from 1 John, uh, that summarizes gospel motivation. You'll probably recognize this verse. Chapter 4, verse 19 of 1 John. We love because... He first loved us. That's gospel motivation. We love because he first loved us. The gospel motivates us, drives us to live a holy life. When you remember this, your holy life in Christ will be good and right and true. If you get the order mixed up, though, and change it around then you're into the dangerous false doctrine and faith-threatening error and even works righteousness. If your holy life comes first, it's almost like you earn then the love of God. That's a false teaching. It goes the other way. God's love for you in Christ comes first and it changes you. And then you live a holy life. Gospel motivation it means that we love because God first loved us. Just think about it. Before you had faith in Christ, you were totally and thoroughly corrupt in sin. Remember, this is the doctrine of original sin. Before Christ, before you knew the gospel, you had no idea about the gospel or about God's love for you. No idea about his mercy or his grace. You were lost. You were condemned. You were an enemy of God. There was no desire whatsoever in your heart to do good works, nor could you do good works in God's eyes. You were dead in sin until Christ made you alive. Here's how we confess it 
um, as conservative Lutheran Christians, you're going to recognize this from the small catechism. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. Everything starts with God and his son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit creates personal faith within you when you hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You hear the promises of eternal salvation in his life, his death, and his resurrection. And then you know that that's true and that you are included. The Holy Spirit has created faith in your heart to believe the promises of Christ. That's where it starts. And that faith, that gospel, good news of the Lord Jesus, it changes you. It transforms your heart. You are rescued from sin and guilt and all the darkness that went with it. Through faith in Christ, you now begin to desire to do good works. And you can actually do good works in God's eyes through faith in Christ. As you're listening to this, you might recognize that everything we're talking about so far is the doctrine of sanctification. This is your holy life in Christ. You have been set apart to belong to God, to live in his kingdom. That gospel good news of the Lord Jesus Christ sets you apart. It sanctifies you, and it changes everything about you. It changes your outlook on life, your attitude towards others, even the priorities of your life. Because you are motivated by the gospel, everything that you do is holy. You have been set apart you have been sanctified by the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that you do is holy. Everything that you do is motivated by the Lord Jesus and his love for you. It's like, and it really is, that your life is lived out in the presence of God. And all of your vocations are sacred. Your vocations are those areas of your life where you have duties and responsibilities. And it's in those vocations, with all the relationships that, that you have in those vocations, where you bear witness to Christ. That's where your light shines. That's where your light shines the brightest. This is why we do what we do in the Christian faith, because we've been set apart, because we know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and his love for us, and it changes us. That gospel, that good news about Jesus, it drives you, it motivates you, it compels you to live a holy and a godly life. That's gospel motivation. Just think about some things that you do in your life, in your Christian faith in life. Think about prayer. Why do you pray? You pray to the Lord your God because you know that he is loving and kind to you in the Lord Jesus. You have learned that he is not an angry judge. You have learned that he's not going to punish you for your sins and iniquities. He punished Christ on the cross for you and in your place. And now because of Christ, you can boldly approach your Father in heaven, knowing that he cares about you, 
that he knows you by name and the details of your life, that he's watching over you, that he is present, and that his power is at work in your life. The Father in heaven, through faith in Christ, has now invited you into his presence. He promises to help you in your time of need. You have peace with God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that gospel, you can now approach your Father in heaven in prayer. You know that he cares about you. You believe his promise that you are welcomed into his presence. All of this about prayer comes through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now prayer is a daily aspect of your Christian faith and life. Think about your relationships with other people, how we are to love one another. Before Christ, you would help people because something, there would have been something that you could have got out of it. Sin makes us all self-centered. We're all curved in on ourselves. But now, through faith in the Lord Jesus, you love and care and help other people because God in Christ has loved and cared and helped you. God's love motivates you to love other people. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ drives you to help other people. The forgiveness of your sins compels you to forgive others and to be compassionate with them. God's never-ending, non-stop love for you motivates you to love your neighbor as Christ has loved you. That's gospel motivation. All of this comes through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And now, loving other people is a daily aspect of your Christian faith in life. Think about your attitude towards Holy Scripture. Before Christ, before faith, you would have thought that the Bible is a book of myths and stories, and you would have nothing to do with it. But now, through faith in Christ, your eyes are opened, and you now recognize that it is God's holy word, that it is a sacred text to study, that it is a body of doctrine to learn, that it is the voice of Christ to listen to. Holy Scripture is one of the holy things that God has given to you in your life. You hold it sacred. You gladly hear it and learn it. That's why we ourselves study Scripture throughout our lives. We are lifelong learners of God's Word, the sacred text of Holy Scripture. And that's why we send our children to Sunday school or cross-training, as we call it here at Trinity. And we send our children to Trinity Lutheran School and confirmation classes and youth groups. We want them to learn to be students of the sacred text of Holy Scripture. The Bible is the authority in our lives because it's God's word. It's God speaking to us and teaching us. And the only way you know all of this is through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now because of faith, because of Christ, you now understand Holy Scripture is, for, is God's holy word. And it's a daily aspect of your Christian faith and life. As you study it, read it, have devotion, sing it, memorize it, it's a part of your life now. Think about the sacraments of holy baptism 
and Holy Communion. On the outside looking in, without faith in Christ, these two things look simply like meaningless religious rituals. But now through faith in Christ, you realize that these are truly holy things. It's God's water. It's God's meal. And in his water and in his meal, he gives you all the gifts of salvation, including the forgiveness of sins and eternal life and his abiding presence in your life. And of course, the gift of the Holy Spirit. God washes you clean in holy baptism. God feeds you on your journey to heaven in Holy Communion. And the only way that you recognize that these are holy things is through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now Holy Baptism and Holy Communion are treasured and sacred to you. The gospel motivates you to hold these things in high honor and regard. Think about your hardships that you go through and that you face. When you have pain and suffering and difficulties in your life, we do not panic or fear or collapse in worry, nor do we blame God as if he was mistreating us. God has given us hundreds of promises that he will take care of us that he watches over us with his mighty power, that he is right there with us through it all. The only reason that we trust God is because we know him as our loving Heavenly Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. The gospel affects how we approach and understand our hardships and our pain and our suffering and our crosses that we have to bear. God's promises now are in effect in your life. God's promises allow you to patiently endure whatever you have to go through, whatever the pain or the hardship or the suffering is. And the only way that you can trust these promises of God is because you first know him as your heavenly father through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And now trusting God and his word and his promises is a daily aspect of your Christian faith and life. You see how the gospel changes everything about us? It gives us a whole new outlook on things. It drives us, compels us to live a holy and godly life. One other example. Think about sharing your faith. Why would you do that? Before Christ, without faith, you would have thought that was shoving the faith down someone's throat or causing a scene at the supper table. But now, through faith in Christ, you realize that you have good news to share, that you have the words of eternal life how could you keep those to yourself? You truly care about people who are dying in their sins and are headed to hell. And so you speak and you talk and you share about the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The gospel transforms even your words in your conversations. You share your faith with your family and your friends and your neighbors and even with strangers. You proclaim the gospel good news of the Lord Jesus Christ with your good words and your good works. You hope and you pray then that the Holy Spirit uses your witness to help people learn about Christ and his salvation so that they too can believe in Jesus and live forever. The only reason that you have this desire to share Christ with others is because you first know him yourself 
as your Savior through his life, death, and resurrection. And now you have a passion to share Christ in your daily life with other people. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed you, changes you, gives you a whole different outlook. You are now compelled to share Christ with others. That's gospel motivation. And all of this is sanctification. Sanctification is the word that means that we've been set apart to live a holy life. That everything about you changes. Your thinking, your desires, your words, your actions, they all reflect Christ and his word. Today, let the gospel good news of the Lord Jesus Christ drive you, motivate you, and compel you to live a holy and godly life. You are sanctified because the Lord Jesus Christ has first saved you. Amen. We pray. God the Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for the Holy Spirit so that we can live sanctified lives of faith. Motivate and compel us by the gospel of your Holy Son. Empower us to reflect you and your love in all that we do so that our words and actions reflect what you teach us in your Holy Word. Sanctify our hearts, our minds, and our lives so that we may be lights that shine of your mercy and grace to others, so that they too may believe in you and live sanctified lives. We pray this through faith in Jesus, the one who sanctifies us. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you in worship. Let us go into the world Tell everyone we meet Jesus loves you unconditionally Let us put his love in action Let us be his hands and feet Let us go into the world and live for Jesus We have known the healing in forgiveness We have seen the power of the cross. We believe there is a great commission. And we believe that he is calling us. So let us go into the world and tell everyone we meet Jesus loves you unconditionally let us put his love in action let us be his hands and feet let us go into the world and live for Jesus to neighbors round the world or down the street the mighty the strong the week till Jesus comes again in all his glory we are his ambassadors of peace so 
Unconditionally Let us put His love in action Let us be His hands and feet Let us go into the world And live for Jesus